to demonstrate the problems that I've been having with this Frenier C uh, oscilloscope. Well, I'm starting out with a signal generator and just to show you what the conditions are on that. This is what the settings are. It's a square wave that I've set and it's at, a, at one, one kilohertz and I've got an amplitude set of two, of two and a half volts. So going to the oscilloscope and displaying it and turn it on here hopefully um, and I'm going to go to auto mode to capture it so my first problem with it is that the co probe compensation does not work correctly uh, it doesn't because the oscilloscope doesn't have the right impedance so this is changing the setting on the probe compensation this is way under undercompensated so it's got a lot of droop and then I turn it and adjust it until it's the best it can be what you should see on this with a good scope is you should see a positive uh, going uh, pulse on this uh, uh, with ne negative with uh, negative droop um, and it never reaches that so uh, later I'll show you on a, on a good scope what this does look like uh, so my second problem is that if you change the time base what you expect is if you go to uh, faster times that you will see a rectangular wave and eventually be able to zero in on on the um, let, me, let me change one other thing here I'm going to put this on normal because I found that on auto that it never really reaches um, it never it, it, it it's even worse on auto than it is on normal so here we are on normal mode and as I expand the time base you should be seeing this thing uh, eventually giving you a good showing you this the slope and the rise time on this pulse but you can see I've gone to 50 microseconds now and now 20 and basically the display is not changing at all 10 nanoseconds now 5 nanoseconds 2 nanoseconds you start to see a little bit of the of the rising edge on this but it never really shows you the rising edge at those settings let me go back down to 20 nanoseconds 5 so 10 nanoseconds and and as you see 10 20, 40, 80, not even changing. It's the same display. When you get down here to uh, about one microsecond, or there we go, two microseconds, it starts to sh show uh, a different display. And going the other direction, go it out to 10, 20, 50 nanosecond, microseconds, 100 microseconds. 200 microseconds now you can see multiple uh, cycles but as I go to slower and slower time bases this is one millisecond two millisecond five millisecond tw 10 millisecond and it's not going lower there we go get down to 50 milliseconds and now it's displaying something that it's completely wrong. It's it doesn't even sync. But this is basically aliasing on the mic on the oscilloscope. Go to a slower setting. There's a hundred, and you're seeing it's it's again showing something that's completely uh, wrong. Uh, the pulse width on this uh, would would indicate that that we're seeing something that's a much lower frequency than the actual frequency so again I'll go in the other direction zoom in and then at some point it's going to all of a sudden show the correct waveform but when I go to see detail one millisecond 500 milliseconds and this more or less shows the correct pulse width 200 100 microseconds 
50 microseconds. Again, you're not seeing any change in the shape. You don't see the, the rise time at all. 5 microseconds. Now at 2 microseconds, you're starting to see something. And at 1 microsecond, again, you're seeing basically a steady waveform. It doesn't seem to change. At some point, I did actually get this thing to show a little bit of overshoot. There we go. Shows a little different waveform, but it's not correct either. So basically, it doesn't switch. It, uh, it's wrong. So those are the two problems on this scope. I'm going to switch to a different scope, and I'll come back and uh, show you what's on that. In that process, I'm going to use the same internal generator and, the, and the, use the Fenerci uh, probe. Okay, so this is uh, using a uh, Siglent uh, SD1104 uh, oscilloscope, and I'm still uh, I'm still using the Fernacy signal generator on this to uh, uh, to generate this square wave, and I've used the same same probe that I was using before, which is the Fenerci probe, and I've just plugged it into uh, an input. Let me see if I can turn to that so you can see. I've plugged it into the input of the of the oscilloscope, and I haven't changed any of, of the compensation yet. So what you're seeing now is that it isn't that the probe is bad as far as compensation goes. It's that the input impedance of the Fenerci uh, oscilloscope is bad. So uh, let me just move this out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to take the uh, adjustment. And you can see now that it does show the overshoot with, a, with an extreme setting. And then I can go below which is what you should see, and I can go above, and more than that, you can set it for proper compensation where the top of the pulse is pretty flat. So there we go. And I'm looking at the, at the a rising pulse, and I'm looking at the leading edge of it, and as I change the time base now and go down to slow to uh, fast settings, so uh, expanding the pulse out, You'll see on here that as you go to, I'm down to uh, 20 nano microseconds, as I expand the pulse rise time, you can actually see the rise time. Here's a one microsecond, 500 nanoseconds, 200, 100, 50, 20, 10, and 5. But I'm just going to go back up here a little bit. Now you can see the leading edge ringing. You can read the you could read the rise time on that, which is what you should be able to do. I think the lowest setting on the Fenerci is ten. Well, I think it's ten nanoseconds, like that. That's what it should look like. And again, going in the other direction, as I go down here, going back to here's the five hundred. I think we had to start with one millisecond, two milliseconds, five. 10 milliseconds, 20, 50, 100, and I can go all the way down, and, and you're, you're, you're not seeing, this is just acquiring data, so it has to acquire the data before it can display it, but once it acquires it, it will fill out the entire screen. You can go down to very slow times. Here's one second, uh, well, let's go down even slower, go down to, uh, five seconds. So it's going to take five seconds, um, five seconds per division. So it's going to take a while to acquire the data, which it's doing. And when it does, it will display across the entire trace uh, at some point. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that because it will take a long time to, to acquire the data. But you can see it, it doesn't go into this low frequency aliasing condition on this. It behaves properly. 
as you'd expect. You can go down this way, you go up this way, and you're going to see details of the pulse, as you should be able to. So that pretty much is the other problem that I'm seeing on here. Now, in addition to this, the uh, Flurency has crashed on me a couple of times. I don't know how to make it do that. I've just been typically switching between things on here, and then all of a sudden it'll completely lock up. It can displays more or less a white screen and nothing else, and it may take a couple of times on, on the reset, which is, which is basically turning it off and on, to get it to even go off and then come up and restart correctly. It has so far always come back, but it's it's not obviously not supposed to crash like that. So that's my uh, initial complaints on this thing, which are which are you know I haven't explored the multimeter, but I'm sure it's not. It's got similar problems.